Hello, so today we are going to solve and graph some equations using ln of x and e to the x, and we're going to find intercepts of ln x and e to the x graphs. So quickly, we're going to do a little review of evaluating with e. So ln of e equals, and what we're thinking is e to some power equals 1, e to what power is 1, that would be 0, right? This is the same ln of 1 is x is the same as e to the x equals 1. Um, here we have... If we have ln of e is x, then my base is e, my power is x, e, and I'm going to get 1. And by similar, or you can bring your power down using laws of logs, 3 ln of e, but we just said ln of e is 1, so this is 3. We also know ln of e to a power, this is always true, ln of e to some power is always going to be that power. So part of the trick on these is actually writing your expression as ln of e to a power. So if we look at these, ln of e to the 1 over, or 1 over e to the squared is the same as ln of e to the negative 2, which makes my answer negative 2. And if you'd like, it would be a good time to stop this, see, so can you do these in your head, and then resume. Again, down here, ln of square root of e. Roots are fraction powers, so we have ln of e to the 1 half, which is one half. And then our final problem right here, ln of cube root of e to the fourth. Again, our roots are the fractions. The roots go on the bottom, so it's a cube root. So the three is on the bottom, the four is the power, ln of e to the fourth. The power on e that gets me e to the four thirds, rather, is going to be four thirds. So there's my answer. So now we can go a little farther. Now, so before x was our exponent. We're looking for the power. We're looking for what the log equaled. Here we're solving for x, where x is in our argument. So again, we're going to go exponential. In this case, e to the 0 is x, but e to the 0 is the same as 1, so the answer for this, x equals 1. Here we have e to the 1 is x. Oh, so x equals e. That is an answer. It's a valid answer. It's not that different than saying that x equals pi. Um, you could do a decimal approximation. That's about 2.71828, on and on. And like pi, it never repeats. It never terminates. But e is an awesome answer. It's, a, it's an exact answer, and that's what we're looking for here. Let's try a couple more. Um, another one, your base. Once again, when you're solving logs, you do your base to your power equals your argument. And there's our answer, x is e squared. And that should make sense if you did a check. If I did, if I gave you the problem of ln of e squared, what would I get? I would indeed get 2. All right now here we're getting a little more complicated. And so our idea is the sa same as solving for equations in other areas. To solve a log equation, it's not that different than solving a trig equation or solving an exponential equation. Your first step is the same in all cases. Undo outside transformations. So those are the things by that I mean outside of the log. And then to get rid of the log, basically our inverse or our undoing our log is switch, switch to exponential or I guess we could say rewrite as an exponential. Once we've done that, then you can undo any inside transformations. So that's going to be true in solving all these equations. And, and it was actually true in the ones we were doing. Uh, there were no outside transformations, so I jumped right to writing it as an exponential. Here we do have an outside transformation. I have two actually. I have 1 minus ln of x. So I want to get ln of x alone. One way to do this, you could subtract the 1 from both sides and divide negative 1, or we could just add ln of x to both sides. Now I have a problem I just did a little bit ago. 1 equals ln of x, so e to the 1 equals x. There's my answer. And we can check it if you want. 1 minus ln of e, but ln of e is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. 
All right, here we're getting a little bit trickier. So again, outdo onside transformations. The outside transformations are multiplying by negative 3, subtracting 2, or adding 2, actually. Um, so I could subtract 2 from both sides, which gives me negative 3 ln x is negative 2. I still have another outside transformation that multiplying by negative 3, multiply by negative 3, and I get ln of x is negative 2 thirds. Now I'm going to, oops, I guess that doesn't move the way I want it to. So now I've done step one. I've undone my outside transformations. So now I go exponential. My base is e. My power is negative 2 thirds. And that equals my argument. And at this point, if there was something in there with x, I would have to undo that. But it's not. This is my answer. x is e to the negative 2 thirds. Or if you like writing it without negative exponents, which is often the case, um, 1 over e to the 2 thirds. It could also show up 1 over cube root of e squared. If this is a test, you can write any of those answers would be acceptable. If it's a multiple choice test, you might have to match your answer to this option or this option. So you want to understand what all those things are equivalent to. Okay, let's try another one. Um, so here again, I'm trying to undo my outside transformations. The outside transformation is multiplying by 4. Undo that, dividing by 4. And I'm not dividing this inside thing in here. I'm dividing 4 times ln of x. Like these are two separate things. This is one thing, and 4 is one thing. And when I divide my 4, I'm left with ln of x plus 3 equals 2. I do now have an ln of something. I am at the point. All my outside transformations are gone. The only transformations left are inside with x. So I rewrite this as an exponential. The base for ln is e. What the log equals is always our power. And that, the base to the power, is the argument. So now I'm really close to having x, but I don't have x. I want x alone. So now this is the first one where we're actually doing this third step. So I undid my outside transformations. I undid my switch to exponential. And now I'm going to undo any inside transformations. And so my last undo is to subtract the 3 from both sides. And I get my answer is e squared minus 3. And you might be saying, that's not an answer, but it is. I could come up with a decimal approximation, but that would not be the actual answer. OK, so let's, so now we're going to look at graphing and use our graph, our solving with our graphing. So two graphs you need to have memorized are e to the x, which is your basic exponential. And when I have negative numbers, I am, makes me divide by powers of e, and I get small numbers. When x is 0, I get 1. And then as x gets bigger and bigger positive, I go up and up and up. My domain is negative infinity to infinity, and my range is 0 to infinity, not including 0. Now, ln of x is its inverse, so whereas this point or this graph, the e to the x has the point 0, 1, the inverse will have the point 1, 0. Whereas this graph has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, ln of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And the domains and range, because these are inverses, will flip-flop. So the range of e to the x is 0 to infinity. My domain is 0 to infinity. And my graph looks like this when I flip over my original e to the x over y equals x. Then the range, now I can go down to negative infinity and I keep going up to infinity. There is not a horizontal asymptote on ln of x. It keeps growing forever. It just grows fairly slowly. So we want these two graphs in our head and now we're going to try and do some transformations of these graphs. Okay, so Sketch the graph, find the intercepts, both x and y, find your domain and range. So I think about this, I have two transformations. We always start with x and move out. So the first transformation is x plus 2. That's a shift, and horizontals all go backwards, left, 2. So if I think about my e to the x graph, which looks like so, I'm going to shift it to the left, 2. 
the asymptote doesn't really move. Um, this point that was, so if I think about before I shifted it, this point right here, which is up one, that point when I shift, oops, is going to stay with it, it's still going to be up one, but it's going to be back at negative two. Okay, so that's just the first transformation. My next transformation is that negative, and that is a vertical flip. And vertical is not over the Y. Vertical is up and down. This point that's right here is going to come down here. This point that's up here is coming down here and so forth. And I get a graph that looks like this. So here's my answer, negative e to the x plus 2. This graph represents just e to the x plus 2. So now I need my intercepts. There is not an, an x-intercept. It never crosses the x-axis. Um, the one intercept I have is when is my y-intercept. And to find the y-intercept, you um, plug 0 in for x, because that's what I want. I want to know what is y when x is 0. Right here, this point, the x-coordinate will be 0. I know that. So what's my y-coordinate? Well, I'm going to plug it into my function, negative e to the 0 plus 2. And that's the same as negative e squared. So this point right here is 0, negative e squared. This should make sense. It's a negative number. And I know that this right here is the point negative 2, negative 1. So I need a number that's bigger than negative 1 in magnitude. And the e squared would be that. So there's my intercepts. Domain and range. Ha, ha, ha. My domain is still negative infinity to infinity. When you have a domain of negative infinity to infinity or a range of negative infinity to infinity, you won't change that unless, actually you won't change it. The only things you can change are restricted domains or ranges. Um, my range started as 0 to infinity, but now it's negative infinity to 0. I can go down here as low as I want. I can get up as high as right before 0, but not quite 0. All right. Uh, let's try another one. Okay, 3 plus ln of x. So now we're, we're starting with our ln of x graph, which it's very important that you understand. Here's my normal graph right here. That's ln of x. What I'm going to do is my one transformation is to shift it up 3. So this point right here is going to go up 3. All the points actually go up 3. And here is 3 plus ln of x. Okay. There is no y-intercept this time. This time there's an x-intercept. So to find x-intercepts, you plug 0 in for y, and then we're going to solve for x. So in this case, y is my f of x. So I do 0 equals 3 plus ln of x. Now we're back to solving a log equation. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, undo my outside transformations. Once they're gone, now I go exponential. My base is e, my power is negative 3, and that will equal my argument, which is x. In this case, I'm done. So this point right here is e to the negative 3, 0. And there's my intercept. Okay. Uh, domain and range haven't changed from the original, so the domain is still 0 to infinity. My range is still negative infinity to infinity. And again, this e to the negative 3 could show up as 1 over e cubed, so this could also be 1 over e cubed 0. It's the same thing. It's equivalent, and that is a valid answer. It is a valid answer. All right. Um, Let's try another one here really quickly, ln of x plus 2. So in this case, my transformation is to shift it left 2. So my asymptote, which is normally at the y-axis, is going back 2. And my um, this point that's normally at 1, 0, right, right here, is going to go back 2. So I'm going to be at negative 1, 0. So there's one of my asymptotes right there. Now I need my other asymptote. 
And that asymptote is the y asymptote, which happens when x is 0. So again, I'm going to plug x equals 0. And I get y equals ln of 2. That is also a valid number. That is a number. It's the power on e that gets me 2. If you type that into your calculator, you will get an answer. So I have the x-intercept of negative 1, 0, which I didn't have to actually plug in to find because I found it graphically. And then y-intercept of 0, ln 2. Uh, domain and range. Domain has shifted back to negative 2 to infinity, and my range is negative infinity to infinity. All right, let's try one more really quickly. I know this is getting long, but we'll try one more. Okay, so I have one more graph. Ln of 1 minus, or 1 minus 2 ln of x. So this is, if we go step by step, I'm going to start with the negative in front. And so my negative, normally ln of x looks like so, okay, with an asymptote right here. This is a vertical flip, so that's up and down. This point up here comes down here. This point here comes up there. It'll still go through the same spot, okay? So there's negative ln of x. The 2 is going to stretch. It doesn't stretch this point at all, but it stretches the other points farther away, farther away. So it's a little steeper. So there's negative 2 ln of x. And then my last thing to do is to shift up 1. And again, because this could be written as negative 2 ln of x plus 1. This is an up 1. So I take, and then I'm going to start another one over here. I'm going to take this blue graph and I'm going to shift it up 1. So that point that right here is at 1, 0 is going to be at 1, 1. And I'm still going to come down like so. And I'm still going to have an asymptote at x equals 0. And I don't have a y-intercept, but I do have an x-intercept. And x-intercepts happen when y is 0. So I still need one more step. 0 is 1 minus 2 ln x. If I add the 2 ln x over, and then I get ln of x is 1 half. Again, I undo. And my final step, I've undone my outside transformations. Now I'm going to go exponential. My base is e, my power is 1 half, that equals my argument. So this point right here is e to the 1 half, 0. There you have it. Hopefully now you'll be able to do some graphing and solving of ln equations.